I want to start with Olivier, who um, it makes, it makes the observation in the slide that you see behind us about the, that's been made about how the wage Phillips curve behaves perhaps as one might have expected, the price, but prices aren't rising, and so the question is, what the hell is going on? Okay. So I had prepared a slide in anticipation, and it, I think it has survived the uh, previous uh, three hours fairly well and coincides with the general message and I think tells us where, where we need to look and what implications it has. So the, the diagram on the, uh, which side is it? This one. It's familiar, except it's not in familiar form, but it basically has the inverse of the unemployment rate and the uh, rate of inflation of wage inflation measured by the employment cost index. And I think, you know, the relation is there. You could plot it in a scatter diagram, but it's, it's there. And I think that's consistent with everything we've heard. Now, what people have put on the right-hand side, typically, is the Phillips curve, the price Phillips curve. What I've done instead of is, is, is plot the... Uh, Again, the wage inflation using the employment cost index, which is the blue line, and the GDP price deflator, which for the purposes of thinking about markups is clearly a much better viable than the CPI. And this is what we produce. And basically, there, you know, it's, it's visually striking, which is that although we saw from the previous graph that the wage inflation was kind of OK, the wage Phillips curve was OK, we, that doesn't seem to be much of a relation between the GDP price deflator and the ECI, Employment Cost Index. It's really where there is clearly a disconnect. People have talked about the low pass-through. It's true, but there's much more than that. There's a lot of variation uh, uh, that, that in the uh, price index, which is not coming from the cost index. So there are really these two dimensions. So starting there, my, my reactions to today. So I think the first puzzle is the slope of a relation between wage inflation and unemployment, and on this, I think we're not clear as to whether the slope has really declined or not. My sense from my own regressions is that it has, but somebody argued that if you do it right, uh, it, it really has remained more or less the same. I think it has decreased. Uh, the simultaneity uh, explanation, I think, is, is a very plausible candidate, subject to kind of a test that I suggested, uh, but it seems to work. Uh, the, the other is that maybe there has been a change in the bargaining structure on, on wages. I mean, the, take, take the case, basically, we think of <coughs> bargaining as sh splitting the rents from, from a match. Well, if the workers are already at the bottom end, there's nothing which can be done uh, to decrease their wage. So if everybody was paid the minimum wage, then we would find no effect of unemployment on wages. So I think there's something like this happening, but I don't think we've solved that one, and we need to do it. On the markup and the second, the second graph, uh, is it, what is it? What's going on? I, I suspect measurement is a big part of it. And the more you know about the GDP deflator, the more you worry. But uh, the, um, I, we've heard various explanations about pricing. I think some of them say, well, you know, some sectors really have to take the international prices given. And therefore, you will not see the kind of pass through. But that's not true for all sectors. So I think here we need to go sectoral in the same way as was done uh, for labor and try to understand it. So that, again, I think that's still work to be done. On the policy implications, which is the theme of the panel, this actually, I mean, the stability of the wage Phillips curve and the instability of the price Phillips curve has a fairly big implication, which I think hasn't been examined and should probably have been in the context of thinking about what the Fed should do, which is to have a wage inflation target rather than a price inflation target. I mean, it clearly is much more related to labor market development. So from a, just a, an empirical point of view, it seems like a better measure to actually look at. But from a normative point of view, uh, if you take a new Keynesian model and the markups reflect largely distortions, then actually it's a good idea to take a measure which doesn't have the markup in it, namely the wages, and basically focus on this. So if when you see wage inflation at 3% and you see productivity growth at 1%, then you're home. Even if uh, GDP deflator, in my case, but the CPI or the core uh, CPI moves around. So we had talked at a dinner with Janet, and we said we would write a paper together. Uh, Janet has been a bit busy. Uh, <laughs> but I think that's still worth exploring. 
uh, also politically actually, telling, that, you know, telling people that the Fed cares about wages and has wage inflation as a target is probably a plus in addition. Okay. So that, does that mean you'd be tightening now because wages are rising? I would basically think that we're more or less at full employment, right? And wage inflation is about three something. Uh, in, in productivity is around one. Uh, that's consistent with the price level correctly measured of about two. Yeah.